Welcome to the Infinite Evolution Podcast, where you'll receive keys and codes to help you unlock your next level of joy, radiance, health, wealth, intuition, embodiment, and soul purpose. This is a space for lightworkers, healers, spiritual entrepreneurs, and anyone who wants to share their soul gifts with the world. We'll be exploring personal, spiritual, and professional growth and ascension through both the esoteric and magical and the tangible and practical. I'm Casey Aileen Knight, coach, mentor, as well as divine channel and soul gift activator. I founded the Luminous Evolution brand to help you elevate your business and beingness and light up the world. So glad you're here. Let's dive in. Uh, Hello, beautiful souls. I am here with Adrian Schroeder, who is a mentor to mystics, a leader for new earth leaders, and a life magician, amongst so many other things in her beautiful multidimensionality. I'm so excited to have this conversation today about unlocking your infinite potential and the infinite evolutionary journey that everyone is on. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Oh my goodness, me too. There is just so much happening on the planet right now. And you were coming on and sharing before we started recording that you were feeling so much potential in the field right now. I would love for you to tell us a little bit about that potential that you are feeling currently. Well, basically what's happening is we are unlocking new earth. And the humans alive right now, like, we're not going to see age of Aquarius. We're the midwives. We're the midwives. We're birthing it. And what's happening with all the astrology is, you know, we're being energetically, cellularly unlocked. It was like, okay, we had eclipse season. Okay. Then we had Jupiter Uranus conjunction in Taurus. Taurus is mother earth values, wealth literally the body, the divine feminine. Oh, we have this full moon in Scorpio purging everything that actually started back in 2021 because it was the last stable full moon in Scorpio before we had South node eclipses in Scorpio. And so it's like hit after hit after hit after hit. It's like, it's like, and so People are being unlocked. People are are waking up. It's like there's a lot of disorientation in the field, which to me is just possibility. Because when we stay in the known, we just recreate the past. But when we're in the unknown, that's when new things come online, new earth can come online, like dreams we never thought we would even dream can come online. I'm here for it. This is why I came here, honestly, is to support people in their luminous evolution, their infinite evolution. And I also consistently feel all of these possibilities that I know are difficult for some people to feel because they're just feeling Mm -hmm. the chaos. They're just feeling the birthing pains. And as someone who has given birth, I can, and also has trained as a doula, I just want to mention that um, whether you are the midwife, the doula, the baby, or the mother, whatever your part of the process is, it is a messy and intense one most of the time, but that's normal, right? It's part of the process. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And that's really, it's the name of the game right now. New earth is like, We're not taking the road less traveled. We're building a new road. And so it's really what I'm experiencing and what my clients are experiencing and what I just feel in the collective is like people's relationship and bandwidth for uncertainty and what that means. And what do they make that mean? Like, do you make it mean possibility or do you make it mean, you know, danger? And it's like goes into, okay, what's alive in your bloodline? What are you carrying from past lives? And it's, we're all just little cycle breakers. 
Absolutely. And I know that the unknown can be terrifying, right? If our ego doesn't see how it's already happened, it doesn't want to have anything to do with it most of the time. And I know a big part of what I'm supporting people with, and I have, I could place a bet that you are as well, is to help people um, support their ego through that process, not kill the ego, but be like, okay, thank you for being part of the journey, but bring the soul online to help guide through the unknown. Right. Right. So the thing about the ego is like, it has a purpose. But we've we've given it the CEO life like role in in our life, and it's like no, actually, my soul, my inner child is the CEO calling the shots, and the ego carries out the mission of the soul. <laughs> um, yeah, that's exactly what I help people do, and it really is getting going from a a way of being which has been programmed into all of us very strategically of living from the mind and logic which by the way you're talking to a previous skeptic and a virgo stellium so i get it <laughs> um and dropping into the body because we will not surpass the ego unless we get into the subconscious the nervous system the cells because the cells literally control 95 percent of our decisions mm -hmm. that's why affirmations don't work affirmations are cool and they can like give you they give your mind a place to land that's more helpful However, there's a ceiling to that because you're not going to outfox the 95%. So what we do is we just drop into the body, open it up, release all of that, you know, this like danger, danger, danger response, which is very normal. We create our own cellular safety through release, through reset, through clearing. And then you can really walk like what you were saying, like with that soul leading the way. Absolutely. I, I love to talk about the soul embodiment process and no longer being separate from our soul energy, but the life of trauma that so many of us have experienced usually doesn't leave enough space for all of our soul energy to actually be with us. And then we feel so separate, like your soul is something that you're not. It's out here as opposed to being in your body with you, leading with you and guiding you. So um, that spaciousness sounds like something that you are helping people create. So is that something that you focus on and making more space in the body in the field? Um, It's not really about making more space. It's cleaning up your house. Yeah. It's like, it's coming from that bedrock of enough like, I don't need more space because I'm enough and, and I'm a child of, you know, God, source, spirit, stars, universe, whatever word that people resonate with. But it's like, none of us go through human life unscathed and we carry stuff from past lives. We carry stuff from our bloodline. We carry all of that. And it's just like, the body's your house for your soul. And so landing in the human body fully, like I do this through breathwork journeys, through holotropic breathwork, and I do it all aligned with people's astrology. And really it's the process of truly landing in your human body and not rejecting it. Not like, oh my gosh, I just want to go back to being part of source. It's like, you're on divine assignment, yo. You're on divine assignment. You came to be a human. There's a lot of shit we can do as humans that you can't do on the other side. Like you can't touch, you can't like, like sex and food and all of that stuff is like, like we get to be here and enjoy while we're on assignment. Part of that is like fully, fully dropping into the body though. And that's what I, I help a lot of my clients do that. And, um, you know, some people are way too much in their body and not a, as much in the ethereal, but it's really, it's clearing the pathway 
for that beautiful synergy to exist. Um, and that's when you become a grounding place for, for miracles because you are the miracle. You're literally like source your soul walking around in this human body suit, like creating it's, it's amazing. It is. And I love that you speak into it as a miracle. Cause I know, I think it was Albert Einstein that said you could either look at everything and think nothing is a miracle or that everything mm -hmm. is a miracle. And I know when you put on those glasses that human life is miraculous and it really is. We're on this ball of rock and water spinning <laughs> thousands of miles an hour through outer space. Kind of ridiculous. It's very miraculous that we are here now. So I just love that lensing. Well, and I was just thinking last night, I helped someone plant ginger. And I guess the gestation period for ginger is, I think it's like a year and a half or something wild. Um, no, that's incorrect. It might be nine months. It was, the, there was something, I think, I think a pineapple is longer than nine months, but I was like, comparing I was like literally that's like the same as a human like making making a human like I don't know if I'm allowed to say the f word on this podcast but like what the fuck like how is that real <laughs> and it's, and just the fact that like you you're like a mom and I mean I'm not a mom yet but it's it's very miraculous and what the Einstein quote it's like if we come from the lens of no matter, like everything's a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? Mm -hmm. So you can choose which one you want to make. And like having those mir miracle glasses. I think that allows us to actually fully commit to our human lives, which I know is a big part of your work as well. Mm -hmm. tell me more about that full commitment that you are supporting your clients in yeah so I work with I would say you know my my client has shifted a bit but it's really like okay I work with new earth leaders spiritual beings here on divine assignment to make their vision whether it's channeled through a business whether it's channeled through hey I'm like a matriarch of my family like or all of the above, it really comes down. A lot of what I work on with my clients is the 3D moves. I call them 3D moves. That's my signature program is called that because I was just noticing, I'm like, people are putting their physical health on the back burner. People don't have mastery of their habits. People don't know how to build the skill set to show up for them no matter what. People resist structure and discipline at all costs responsibility enters the room and they want to bolt you know the idea of money like we're supposed to be stacking mad cash on behalf of god source and then circulating it to advance the agenda of the light like all of these things i just noticed were like major challenges for for people and i have a history like my lifetime I was raised by farmers and classical musicians. I started competing on piano when I was four. I went on and I had a successful classical music career playing in orchestras. So like habits and mastery and excellence and systems and all of that is like my sauce. I love it. And it's something that I bring to my clients because it's like this might and I'm a projector in human design. I have a very penetrating aura and, and I can cut to the root of something. Your magic means nothing if you spill it on the ground. So what I mostly help people do through all of those different lenses is help people stop spilling their magic, being, I call it a floaty mystic, where you're like, just go with the flow, just go with the flow. And it's like, no, no. So without the the masculine, the feminine collapses. So that's really what I do. And I do it through 
breath work because again, we're coding it in because so many people are scared of their own masculine energy and um, doing it in alignment with people's blueprint, with the astrology and the collective. And then of course I bring in my systems, like I'll write workouts for people based on their astrology. I'll like, okay, these are your like needle moving activities to make money in your business. Like, hey, you want to change this in your physical vitality? Here's a system, not not a system from the patriarchy, not like an oppressive thing, which people, I think that's another reason why, because there's been so many oppressive systems. Mm -hmm. Um, However, our resistance to structure is us oppressing ourselves. Mm -hmm. So it's really just the blend of all of it, but it's like building it custom for them teaching people how to look at their astrology and realize what, you know, I call them holy habits. It's like, where are your holy habits? Like, what, what is your blueprint for that? Like, how do you make it holy? How do you make it a ceremony and a ritual rather than a punishment? It's like, and I I could talk about it forever because it's so important. And it's so, it's like the magic in the mundane. And this is part of the human landing. It's like, it's like, yeah, you can astral travel, but like, can you work out three times a week? Like you said you would, like, we got to have both. <laughs> Amen. I absolutely agree. And I was just teaching um, on this inside of my uh, transformational journey facilitator training where I'm training coaches to support people. And we were just talking about how a lot of the people that will come to them are going to be those floaty mystics, the people who are ha- have so many beautiful new earth codes, but are having trouble actually moving the needle forward, making things happen because they come from a place where you can think it and then so it is. And they don't understand necessarily how grounded creation happens in organic time here on earth. And mm-hmm. we're not taught this stuff in schools. We're taught the oppressive systems that people then rebel against and finding ways to repattern all of the beliefs that we have about systems and structures. Cause I was one of those, I just want to be in flow people who had to learn if I wanted to actually show up on my soul mission and share my, my voice with the world and make those mad stacks of cash, which I love. Um, I needed the systems. I needed the structures to have that support and to have that stability so that I could continue to grow without, you know, just burning out or not getting anywhere, spinning your wheels. It's absolutely so essential. And so many of us still resist, even when we know how good it is to have those systems and structures. So I'd love to hear, because I'm sure I'm not the only one who can have the ideas, have the vision, and then have those, you know, three workouts a week that I want to do that I can still fall into the resistance. What is your favorite way to zap the resistance or dissolve it or however you do to help people get back on track with those things in the 3d world. Yeah. So I would say that your, your relationship with resistance determines everything in your life. And so for, I bring it back to weightlifting a lot because I do that a lot. Um, If there's no resistance, I'm not growing. And resistance is actually the doorway to your destiny. And what happens is people meet resistance and they're like, fuck, something's wrong. And then they bolt in the other direction and then they just ghost their destiny. And it's like the more you will have the most resistance to the things that will change your life the most. You really will. So it's not about zapping resistance. It's about meeting resistance as like, like, thank you. I honor you. Like total reverence to the resistance. And then moving with it and through it and being strengthened into the person you came here to be through the resistance. So one way I help my clients with that is in breath work. And that's why so many people resist breath work in general, because you can't hide. It's not like, and you know, I have so much respect for, you know, mama ayahuasca, but it's not like. It's not like sitting in plant medicine where you're, you're kind of at the mercy you can prepare, but like once you 
are in ceremony with her, she's going to kick your ass in the way that is correct. You know, um, with breath work, you, it's you and you, (laughs) it's like, you don't feel like taking another breath and you choose not to, you're breaking self-trust. But when every time you do, even though it's hard, you're building that self-trust. And then you're at the very same time, you are opening up your nervous system and resetting it and recalibrating it. And you're getting that 95% of your decision-making online because there's, there's a huge reason. There's so many reasons why if we just use the working out example, because it is so universal. Um, and it really ties into this floaty mystic thing because a lot of mystics don't take care of their physical vessel, which actually is, you know, it's uh, diluting your your power and your gifts and your ability to channel because this is the vessel. One of the biggest pe- reasons people don't follow through is because they feel cellularly unsafe. It's perceived cellular it's perceived unsafety. And so, because, you know, when you, when you do things you've never done, your life is going to change and oh my God, that's unsafe. And so you have this nervous system response. And by the way, it's not like at the front forefront of your mind, this is all in the subconscious. So we can have all the systems, we can study the astrology, you know, I can be there coaching, which does help. However, it's, So many people come to me, they're like, I've done all the courses, I've done all this, I've done all that. And I'm like, yeah, babe, we got to go deep. Like, you must breathe through it and I'm not doing it for you. I'm here to hold the space. But you are your own healer. And so when we talk about this idea of resistance, it's so... It's so multi-layered, but, um, you know, there's this whole thing about let it be easy, let it be easy, let it be easy with the feminine and it's not about things being, it's not about like hustle or grind, but there is, you know, the hustle is holy a lot. The hustle can be holy and, um, It's like, are you being pulled forward by the vision? But I'd like to say, let it be hard. (laughs) Let it be hard because you're being fortified into who you came here to be with the resistance. And it's like, you will go to bed at night. Like, let's say you had a workout scheduled and you didn't feel like doing it. The times when you don't feel like it, that's when it matters the most because It's not, is it about the workout? Yes. Is it about your health? Yes. It's more about your relationship with yourself of like, hey, I'm a person who shows up and keeps their word or the moment things get hard, I ghost. Who am I? And it's a game of math because it's like the more times you choose, like even when I don't feel like it, even when this like weight is heavy, I'm still going to do it because this is my commitment and I know it's good for me. Um. And I don't choose the short-term comfort. I choose the, the, the legacy, the vision. The more you do that, the more you believe in yourself. It's like, it's like uh, the return on investment. It just gets so crazy amazing what it can go crazy spiral down the other way every time you don't do it. So it's kind of, I feel like I'm pretty old school in a lot of ways, but it really is. These are some ancient codes that have just been lost. And and it's almost like I'm like an earth angel guide. I'm like, okay, you got, you incarnated here. Like, here's how to do it in the human, you know? So that's a big riff on resistance. But yeah, <laughs> there's a lot there. So many gold nuggets there. I really appreciate that reframe on resistance and how basically resistance or fear because sometimes those can be so intertwined but I've, I've heard it said and I've said many times everything you want is on the other side of fear right your fear your resistance is what you get to walk through because it is what is that next level for you mm-hmm. but I am curious about your thoughts about the 
the discernment between when you are resisting something because it is your next level, it's what you're supposed to do, versus a resistance because it's actually not aligned for you. Yeah. So that's a question I get a lot. And I feel like that's that's um similar to the conversation between force and flow. First of all, you must be in tune with your intuition. And here's the thing that everybody's like, trust your intuition, listen to your intuition. People don't really talk about what that means. It's a deeply uncomfortable personal process of figuring out where your intuition shows up in your body, what it feels like for you. And then you just got to be in the field figuring it out. And so that's the first thing. Like you'll never know if you're out of, if you're not in tune with your intuition. And, you know, if you're disassociated from your body and you're in constant fight or flight, you won't be able to access that information. So like knowing whether it's resistance because it's going to change your life or resistance because it's not meant for you. I don't know if anybody can answer that question when they're disconnected from their body. So this is like what I do in my work. It's like, I do not, like I guide my clients, of course, but it really is guiding people to their own truth. And I would, what I would say is first get yourself in in tune with your intuition, fully land in your body and be in relationship with your body because your body's smarter than your mind, like a thousand percent. There's a reason why smartphones are designed to keep us out of our power and scrolling because we're disassociated, we're easier to control and we can't feel our own body, which is, you know, technology in itself. After all that, really get real with yourself about your patterns. Are you someone who is constantly on the edge of like, hey, I'm I'm leaving my comfort zone today. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. Or are you someone who is like more lean back? I think that's going to... That's going to tell you a lot. And I would encourage you to just explore with doing the direct opposite of what you have been doing and just see what happens. That's an interesting challenge for people to try doing the opposite of what they've been doing. Mm -hmm. Tell me more. Give me an example so that people can kind of really lock into it. Okay, so if you're someone who, I'll just use myself for an example. How about that? <laughs> um, for me, I've always been someone, like taking action is not my problem. Like I've, and it's been very interesting for me in my journey. What's your human design, by the way? I'm a 3-5 sacral generator. Okay, I knew you had a sacral. Could feel it when I got on the call. Feel that motor running. Could feel the motor. Honestly, my my undefined sacral is like wee. <laughs> um, especially in my journey as a projector, I've just been a hustler from the, from when I was young. I'm like, yeah, I know what I want. I I I know how to get it. I know how to make it. I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna go get it. I just go do it. And so it's been like, honestly, a huge mind fuck for me, like this, like, and feminine energy, I didn't even hear those words uttered until like five years ago. So like in my life journey, I'm 32 now, I made it to like 27, 28. And I was like, feminine energy, huh? What's that? Like wear dresses or what? Like, <laughs> um, so for me, 
my biggest experiment with like doing the direct opposite, like normally I would just crush all day, every day, just crush, crush, crush. I'm going to do this task, do this task, do this. And I'm very, very efficient as a projector. And the craziest thing is I've created successful multi six figure visions that way. So honestly, sometimes our biggest success becomes our biggest block to the next thing. And so my biggest, you know, do the direct opposite. I'm like, what would the feminine do? Or like, what would, if this is my like instinctual, like guttural response, which by the way, I don't have a response because I don't have sacral. So that's just like the patterning in my nervous system about what works and what creates results and success and all of that. What's the direct opposite? Oh, I'm going to do these things that light me up that I'm obsessed with, but you know, I'm going to read my book at like 1 p.m. on a weekday and, and just like being more in the receptive energy rather than the like, I don't know why this is coming through, but like the jackhammer energy, like, <laughs> um, so yeah, that's like doing the direct opposite. I was there. I was, there's another thing coming through as well. It was because I moved to Maui less than a year ago. I came here. I had never lived here this lifetime. I had never even visited here this lifetime. And I was just getting, you know, you're supposed to spend a lot of time in Maui. I'm like, cool. I'm Lumerian, of course. And then I started getting like, oh, like this isn't a trip. Like, I think I'm moving there. And I was just like, Things were being revealed to me so quick. Like I was like, I felt super disoriented. And so I had been in a season of like hermit vibes, like really just introspection. And I was like, I just need to like, remember who I am. I'm just going to do the direct opposite of what I would normally do. And just like, I just want to like move the energy in the field. So I like got invited to a baby shower and I said, yes. And I would never usually say yes, especially because it wasn't someone I super knew. And it, and I ended up going and it was like super conservative, like Bible vibes. And I was like, oh, like I know who I am. And it was just so clarifying. So I don't know if that answers your question, but that's how I play with that conversation. Um, I would say generally people that I work with are more in indecision and inaction than taking too much action. I don't know about too much, but just like no space to receive. Mm, I think that is also the journey that a ton of people are on right now. Um, in just a variety of ways that there's some kind of imbalance that they are then coming back to balance in. Because I hear you, I have a lot of clients who are stuck in inaction and that's why they want to come to me because they want to get things done. Uh, My energy is always like, do all the things. But my journey into more of that receptivity was actually through my astrology as Mm -hmm. someone who has a Sagittarius stellium, but a Taurus rising. I knew you were a Taurus. I'm Taurus rising too. (laughs) So that journey to slow down has been Uh such an interesting one as I've gotten older and grown into my rise, our rising sign. That's just such a fascinating one. I was feeling so much resonance with your story. And now we understand why for that rising sign is um, I always consider what you're here to to rise into what lessons you're here to learn. And I was also someone who very, um, I had no, no doubt that I could do what I wanted to do, but clarifying exactly how I wanted to get there was always my problem, but taking the action steps, happy to do that and to trust where they were going to lead me, but slowing down and just being, yeah, I was uncomfortable for a while. Oh yeah. I literally, 
So I, I just kept getting that again and again and again, that message from spirit. And I'm like, anything but that spirit, I'll do anything but just relax because, you know, it's that illusion of control, which, you know, we do have control over a lot. We really do. We have control over our mind, how we respond, the moves we make. But um, yeah, I, I'm so with you on that the just like I still have it I still have it sometimes and it's like yeah there's a couple things coming through with astrology because my shaman name's white earth star like I'm here for a bridge from earth to star like that's that's who I be um and my human's name is Adrian as a Taurus rising, I don't know if you have any planets in Taurus. Do you have planets in Taurus? Yeah. So that's like when there's no planets in the rising sign, the rising sign is like the vehicle. It's like your cells. It's your body. It's, it's how your people will recognize you. And when you, we don't have any planets there, it can kind of be like this elusive creature that we it's not like totally pinned down because I have all these Leo placements. I have all these Virgo placements. I have all these Capricorn placements and I'm like Taurus, huh? Um, and so, yeah, I really resonate with what you're sharing and it's, and the thing is like not making that part of you wrong. Like the part that's just wants to bang out tasks. It's like, that's shit holy. Like that's really, that's amazing. And it's the word that is coming in because the South nodes in Libra, it'll be in Libra until 2025. It is a karmic purge in all unhealed relationship. Libra literally rules peace. And so that's why there's war and genocide and, and all of this is like, everything's purging that's you know not peace right people talk about balance but balance in my experience doesn't exist we're we're seeking harmony it's about harmony yeah it's not like 50 50 black and white like which trust me that's way more comfortable because we can make it make sense but I you know I'm even looking at the painting behind you it's like that's harmony it's it's that harmonizing of everything. Um and and the divine feminine at the helm. The balance is in harmonizing everything as opposed to one precarious moment between two scales. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that so much. And that's one of my, my main teachings. I work a lot with the unified field and harmonizing all of the different elements, whether we're talking astrologically or just internally or externally in our world. And sometimes harmony means you are focused in one area and you're deeply focused on that. And you might wind up letting a few of the other things drop and that is appropriate for certain life transitions or different times at your life. And then bringing it all back into harmony and creating that that rhythmic harmony mm -hmm. I think is also important because yeah. people can be so disconnected to the fact that there are rhythms for creation there are rhythms in life there are cycles and we are so programmed by our culture to think that it's all very linear right we're just gonna grow 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 and we forget that there's times of you know, creation and there's times of destruction. There's times of letting things go. There's times for rest. Yeah. There's times for action. Yeah. And that's coming back. You know, we are talking about new earth. New earth is the ancient earth where we live with earth as like, like I don't plant it like that ginger I planted yesterday. It's not reaping today. It's in gestation. It's in the fertile soil. It's dark. Mm. You know, it's, yeah, it's really coming back into living with the, with the cycles and the rhythms. I love that you say the rhythms of life and like 
there are seasons to life and like having that hyper focus or hyper obsession or hyper action moment of life is important. And then it's like, you might lean back and you know, it's all written in the astrology, but there's, there's so much, <laughs> there's so much. And, uh, it's so individual and it's universal at the same time. Cause like, we're each going to express it in our specific way. Um, and nobody to all the listeners out there, like if you're out there sitting on a dream, if you're out there sitting on a vision, I want you to know that nobody has exactly what you have. Nobody can do it the way that you are meant to do it. And it's an important, important part of a better world. So don't sit on it. Mm -hmm. And if you do sit on it for too long, I mean, because they don't really belong to us either, even though we have our right. own unique codes, it's going to get passed along to someone else who is going to take action on it. Mm -hmm. Dreams and ideas and visions and ideas, they they come through the field and that the muse, muses of ideas will just pick it up and give it to someone who is ready to actually go with it. Right. And I really want to speak into the word ready as well, because ready is a myth. Like you're never going to feel ready. That's another thing. And it, I, I was listening to a podcast earlier today and, um, you know, this really ties into the theme of this conversation because one of the big resistance points with mystics is money. They're like, I'm going to talk about every version of abundance except money. <laughs> and I heard this quote, um, it was money loves speed wealth loves time, poverty loves indecision. And I was like, oh, wow. Um, so that, you know, this, this idea of being ready is like, you, you're not ready or not, you just decide. You just decide and then you go and you get information along the way. But it's like, again, that full commitment to your human life. Like, did you decide you're going to do it here or not? And like, let's go. And you're going to get the clarity as you take action. It's, I wish I could tell you like, hey, spirit's going to drop in with your five-year plan. And like, hey, this is everything that's going to happen. That's not how it works. <laughs> so it's like, are you willing to take what you get from spirit and run with it? And, and see what is trying to be created through you. Mm -hmm. And sometimes going back to that, that piece that um, you were saying about how it's not about spaciousness. I just wanted to bring it all back about making that room in your body. I was actually thinking more in terms of your energy and in your life. Mm. This is one of the things that I've gone through and experienced is slowing down and actually taking out some of the busy and creating that leaned back energy gave me more space in my energy field because I wasn't so busy all the time. I wasn't in this, you know, um, sympathetic nervous system state because I was go, 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 go. But leaning back and creating the spaciousness in my energy field, in my schedule, in my life of just being is always when I've been able to have actually the next level vision things drop in. Yeah, I'm totally. Fully formed. Right? Yeah. We need that room. We need the we need the harmony, and there though that's cyclical, right? You have a, you have times where you're guided to go, to move, to do, and other times where you just need to be in receptive mode for that next thing to come through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it's like, what are you gonna go? How are you gonna build something you don't have? You know what I mean? Like that's why, you know, the feminine always comes first. <laughs> We wouldn't need a cup to drink if water didn't exist, right? So that's what you're talking about is with the spaciousness, the water can flow. The energy flows and you're not bombarded with notifications, with scheduling, with all of that. You're just like, I can just, I can be, I can be, you know, <laughs> I was thinking about what word comes after that. There's no other word. I, I can be, I can receive. And then from there, like, and I can receive it clearly, not like in distortion or mm -hmm. all of that. Um, yeah. 
Absolutely. And I love how everything that we've been talking about weaves back into itself because that piece around if I'm trying to receive and I'm not sure about my intuition and there's distortion, you know, it comes back to the nervous system regulation, right? And how much we can be in our body and how we can be discerning through Mm -hmm. that space. And it's just very full circle. So I love this conversation, but you've talked a lot about new earth. And I am also here to be ushering in this new earth experience, but Mm -hmm. I would love to hear you in your own words, describe what the heck that is. Cause there's a lot of different definitions and a lot of distortion out there about um, what that means. Yeah. Well, I just want to say first discernment must be at an all time high because we're in spiritual warfare. You got to be so deeply discerning because, you know, forces of darkness know that new earth is coming and they're grabbing at energy and they're perpetuating uh, propaganda. And it's like, it's not about being in fear, but it's about being real. And this is another part about dropping into the human body and why not a lot of people want to do that because they're like but this is happening on earth and I'm like yeah you're right and we can we can handle it you know we actually chose we are the sacred warriors so that's the first thing new earth is literally we are taking we're making heaven on earth we're bringing in unconditional love limitless abundance harmony joy peace co-creation like the heart chakra like I know the people in your world and you remember Lemuria remember you know Atlantis which we're getting very Atlantis right now with AI and everything and so making sure we keep the organic timeline at the root so we don't repeat the previous pattern but what is new earth we're literally like New earth is making heaven on earth. Like the things that we've actually yearned for, for so long. And here's the thing. This life is going to cost us our old one. In terms of, you know, the way that humans have operated on earth up till now. That's why we've been in such a tower moment since 2020. And I was saying to my clients and my community back in 2020, I'm like, I love you. I don't want to scare you. This is just the beginning. And it was really the opening act of, you know, seven years of astrology that's going to unlock us into 2027 which is a huge shift in the frequency on earth, but it's all in the service of midwifing, birthing new earth. And we have Pluto and Aquarius, the planet of the underworld, the planet of death and rebirth and transformation. Like we have, we are so supported by spirit in this, but like when we come back to new earth, it's like we're going back to the ancient codes and way of life. And and when I talk, when I think about the journey to get there, you know, there's a reason why Star Wars, Hunger Games, Harry Potter, uh, Lord of the Rings was all channeled. Because I believe with every fiber of my being that we were meant to see what it's like for people to use their power for good and use power for evil which not a lot of people will speak about it that specifically but i think it's really important because we're going to be called to to hold power for the light and it's going to be like you were saying whether you're the midwife the mom the baby or someone else <laughs> it's blo- it can be bloody it's bloody and um I'm not one of those people that's that's going to sugarcoat it. It's like there it's 
amazing and wonderful and just inevitable when we all act in alignment with our destiny timeline. It's not going to be easy though. Not everybody's going to get it. Like there's a reason why a lot of people, including myself, like I feel very connected with people online in this way, but like the people in my like earthly daily life, like I might not, it's it's a bit different in Maui versus Chicago, but just like dropping in about new earth is like not something I would do with most people. Right. Because that's what it means to be a leader though. We're literally, we're shattering the status quo. And so, yeah, we're all positioned all around the globe to anchor our certain frequencies and there's going to be a tipping point, but it's, you know, it's a, it's a game of spiritual endurance. Like I did a whole podcast on my, on my podcast um, called spiritual endurance. And it's like, how, you know, how do you maintain this for so long for over the long term? Because new earth is a long game. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that answers your question, but I love, I'm so excited for new earth. (laughs) I I just loved how much you were saying that we are making it because that it's a co-creation and it's not just going to happen to us. And I'm tired of the narrative of, you know, people having a light switch event where we just ascend out of our bodies. That's very much like the rapture style of that, because that abdicates our responsibility as co-creators. We are the ones that are, we've been waiting for. We're the ones that are making it happen. And I just love connecting with other people who are Uh, in that energy of co-creation and taking responsibility for leading themselves and then also supporting other people in leading themselves too. Yeah. Well, that's just being a victim, but in a fancy outfit. If you're, if you're just like waiting for some lightning bolt to come, you know, save you essentially. Or spaceship or something. (laughs) To, you know, like just just completely just yeah, change that that light switch moment. And sure, there might be some kind of solar flash that's information from the sun that offers us upgrades. There might be all kinds that who knows what's gonna actually happen. There might be a point at which our bodies, you know, transcend into a light form, but but it won't happen in the same that happened. Yeah. It's not coming to save us. And that stuff doesn't change your life unless you've been deeply landed in your body and doing the work and taking the action over time. Like if you're just waiting for it, you won't even be able to absorb that voltage. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And, but there is more support then we can, most people can fathom, right? There's so much support available, not only in, from people, leaders like you, and thank you so much for bringing your soul gifts to your community and offering your no nonsense version of the, you know, how people need to get their shit together so that they can Uh create this world that we all want to live in that we all feel like we're we are here to create that we remember that because it's not just you're talking about bringing back the ancient earth but it's like that that ancient future merging together all into one i'm just so grateful that we have leaders like you but there's also support from all of the beings on our luminous team the earth herself she is cheering for us she's rooting for us there's so much happening right now Anytime you feel like shit's going weird, just go outside, put your feet on, on mother earth and reconnect your umbilical cord and everything will come back. Like everything will just, you will remember. And it's not about never forgetting. It's just always coming home. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And if for some reason you can't get outside, like you can do it energetically. You don't have, if it's the middle of the night or it's the middle of winter, I know that's not an issue for you, but for some of us. Well, I used to break in the snow. I was very much like, I used to break the ice in Lake Michigan and jump in in the winter. Um, I'm just like crazy biohacker like that. But um, it was like, no matter where you are, no matter like 
you can connect with earth. Even if it's just like stepping outside, you could be in the middle of a big city and take a deep breath. It doesn't matter if it's rainy, sunny. You can sit on your meditation cushion and feel your cord go down into the earth. Like mm-hmm. and touch your body. You're made of earth. Like when when we are mm-hmm. disconnected, it's just a uh, illusion, honestly, because you can't actually disconnect yourself from from yourself. Like we are here, right? So, right? Or it's an it's an energy as opposed to a reality. Mm-hmm. So there's just. Ah, oh, more and more that I know I would love to chat with you about, but I want to wrap up here and just ask if there's anything else you want to share with people who are on this journey of co-creating the new earth, of their own evolution and making moves in the 3D happen. Yeah, so I would say make yourself proud. Make yourself proud and really, I want you to get very familiar and and intimate with what your revolution is and what you're willing to do because there's just too much going on earth that is wrong. And each of us has a revolution to lead, a movement to lead. You, you could be leading a revolution in your own family where you're like, I'm the first woman that's going to create a business and do it like in my woo woo as fuck way and, and, you know, share my gifts. Like that could be your revolution. But it's like when I look at what's going on and there's active genocide on our planet, it's like, so many people really get caught up in their own patterns and their own stories and their own stuff. And the perspective really matters. Like when I'm sitting in my, in my home, my home with food in the fridge, with, you know, all of this. And I'm like activated by something somebody said, like a lot of times I'm like, wow, like, This is so small. It's actually like a huge privilege to have this challenge right now. And like, there's, I think about women a lot, you know, I, I work with all people, but women, there's like, you know, there's people around the globe that cannot access their destiny. They're literally in a war zone. There's people that cannot do the healing. Like they, like they physically are in places where they cannot. So it's like, every time I breathe, I breathe for me, I breathe for them. And so it's like, the biggest thing I want to say to the listener um, is choose your revolution, decide what's important to you, protect it at all costs and commit to it and know that it's, it's for you, but it's also like so deeply important for everybody on this planet. And like, we need you. If we're going to do this thing, we fucking need you. All hearts on deck. All hearts on deck. Yes, I love that. Oh my goodness. This has been so divine. I absolutely have enjoyed your energy. And I know so many people are also wondering how they can get more of it. So tell us about your podcast and where people can find you to just hang out more and learn more from you. Yeah, I have a podcast. It's called A Better World with Adrian. So I channel, I do one deep dive every week. Really, it's a, it's a portal. It's an unrestricted vocal channel because, you know, social media is very censored and I, it's designed for a breakthrough for you. So go find that on Apple, Spotify, YouTube. If you want to work with me, you can reach out to me on Instagram or all of my information, like I'll share to for my email and stuff we can put in the show notes but i'm really calling in just leaders ready to do the thing so it's time it's It's time time. now is the time Mm -hmm. Mm, thank you for sharing all of your beautiful keys and codes with us um this is definitely one that was full of wisdom 
bombs and yeah, little codes and keys to unlock so much potential. And I know that I am feeling even more excited about the heaven on earth that we are co-creating. So thank you again for being here. And I hope we get to stay in touch and we'll talk soon. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you've enjoyed this episode, please make sure to subscribe and share this out to people that need to hear it. Tag us on social media. You can find us at The Luminous Evolution on Instagram. And keep the conversation going by joining my free sacred community, Luminous Evolution, on Facebook and get a taste of my favorite tools and techniques inside my free Frequency Upgrade Academy. You can also join me inside my membership, mastermind, certification programs, or private coaching to be deeply supported on your evolutionary journey. Make sure to check out the links in the show notes and cheers to your infinite luminous evolution.